Are you looking for fingerings to make your life easier in the upper register? Or perhaps find a high note fingering that matches color with your other registers? If so, you're in the right place. This is John Kurakawa, and today we're going to discuss my favorite fingerings in the upper register. Now keep in mind, as one of my woodwind coaches, John Mack, used to tell us, standard fingerings are called standard fingerings for a reason. If you're getting started, or a beginner, you have to be comfortable with the standard fingerings and establish good embouchure, airflow, and voicing before trying these. However, if you're more advanced or just plain persnickety like I am, some of these will be of interest to you. Now, fair disclaimer, everyone is different. You all play different clarinets, mouthpieces, reeds, voice differently. So some of these may work for you and some won't. As I always say, take what you need and leave the rest. If anything I say or demo here interests you, you need to get Clarinet Fingerings by Tom Ridenour. This is a fantastic resource for any clarinetist. It's one of the best I've ever seen. I teach with this book at my fingertips, and it's always on my stand when I'm practicing. Trust me, you'll come back to it again and again. This video is not sponsored. But consider supporting Tom by purchasing this from his website, and check out the other cool stuff there too. The link is down in the description. So first, I'm gonna start with high C. I know, you're thinking, what? After all, high C is one of the easiest notes to finger on the clarinet. If you're looking for something a little darker or a great trill fingering from B flat, try this. To your chromatic B flat, add the two bottom trill keys in your right hand. This fingering speaks easily, has a more covered sound than the standard fingering, It makes a great trill without sacrificing pitch. I first learned about this fingering from David Pino in his wonderful book, The Clarinet and Clarinet Playing. I used to check this book out from the library all the time when I was a kid. It has great chapters on practicing, teaching, read making, history, and repertoire. I highly recommend it. Next, high C sharp. Now, most of us know the trill fingering, high C plus the two lower trill keys in the right hand. It works great as a trill fingering, but is a little bright and thin to use as a sustained pitch. However, if you have to play softly and want a little more cover, try adding the third finger in the left hand. This doesn't work when playing loudly, but when playing softly, it's worth considering in certain situations, like slurring softly from C to C sharp. Next, my favorite, high D. I love to use altissimo fingerings that just use the register key and vent the left hand thumb hole. This fingering, while it might be awkward, is stupendous when having to play or enter softly on high D. The right hand E flat pinky is essential here. Make sure you're not covering the thumb hole. You'll have to make sure this fingering isn't too sharp compared to the normal fingering. It's a bit more covered and matches the upper clarion a little bit better. The other fingering I like has a very specific use case, slurring smoothly at a soft dynamic between high C and D. Again, you're only depressing the register key and not covering the thumb hole. This fingering was a favorite of my teacher, Ron DeCant. This one is a bit awkward to get to, but if you can play it in tune and coordinate your fingers, it's well worth it. For high E flat, I use a similar fingering to the first high D that I mentioned before, like this. Because everyone's setup, embouchure, and voicing are a bit different, there are a few options. All of them use the register key and leave the thumb hole uncovered. My teacher Ron DeCant liked to use the alternate high D and E flat for the opening solos in Strauss's Death and Transfiguration, like this. All of the rest of the fingerings I'll talk about use the thumb and register key. So 
back to normal. High F can tend to be a bit hesitant in response and varying degrees of flat, especially on the Buffet R13. You can always vent the banana key in the right hand, just make sure you don't press down the rings with the key. The other alternative, if you can get to it, is this. Due to the stretch in the right hand to the second to top trill key, I call this fingering the Vulcan neck pinch. Yes, you can probably tell from my nerdy appearance that in addition to being a professional clarinet player, I'm also a huge Star Trek nerd. Anyway, getting back to this fingering, it responds beautifully, if only it weren't so awkward. For high F sharp, there's a great fingering that my colleague Rosario Galante, assistant principal clarinet in the Omaha Symphony taught me. He learned it from his teacher, John Manassi, and refers to it affectionately as the Manassi F sharp. This fingering is similar to the previous F fingering, but uses the top trill key in the right hand. It's super awkward. On the other hand, that key probably costs about $300 to put on your clarinet, so you may as well use it, right? I like to use this fingering on the sustained high F sharps in the Peasant with Bear passage from Stravinsky's Petrushka. It also works great in the first movement of the Poulenc Sonata. The other high F sharp fingering I really like is to overblow high B flat and add the right hand E flat pinky. My teacher Ron DeCant used to call this the high hard fast ball. Now I'll admit, I suck at everything with the ball. You're looking at the only child in Westlake City history to strike out a T-ball. But once you figure out this fingering, it's very dependable at mezzo forte or above. Just be careful. This fingering can tend towards sharpness, but is manageable by voicing it a bit lower. Now to everyone's favorite, high G. The standard high G fingering tends to be sharp and edgy on most clarinets, including mine. I have two that I like to use primarily, but remember, there seem to be as many fingerings for high G as there are dogs in the world. And I love my dog. The first one is basically top space E, but with the middle finger in the left hand up. The right hand E flat pinky is essential for this one. It responds much better than the standard fingering. The second one I like to use is also easy to get used to. Finger high B and add the banana key in the right hand without pressing the rings down. As with most of these fingerings, I recommend using the right hand E flat key for resonance and response. So what fingerings do you like to use in the upper register? This list isn't all of them, just some of my favorites. Did I leave some fingerings out that you really like? I'm looking forward to seeing all of you in the comments. Take care, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video down here.